Hello there, I'm tough guy film expert Mike Malloy. You caught me recalibrating my Hawk Corporation X811 version 4 blaster and just about to watch the 1988 film Death Collector. It's a film that gets so little acknowledgement that when you mention it to people, if they have any glimmer of recognition at all, they think you mean the 1976 film Death Collector, the low budget mafia movie that launched the acting career of Joe Pesci. And hell, even some people selling gray market Death Collector DVDs online don't know or care which movie they're actually selling. But no, our 1988 version of Death Collector is not a mob movie. It's a retro-influenced and western-influenced post-apocalyptic film, and when it came out on VHS for the first time, it was on Radon Home Video, the very worst video company releasing movies on standard play cassettes. And when it got released on VHS the second time, it was on Mintex, the worst video company putting out films on extended play cassettes. So clearly, this must be some forgotten movie made by single-time filmmakers who promptly quit the business after making this obscurity, right? Well, hold on. Let's dispel that idea immediately by pointing out that Death Collector screenwriter John McLaughlin went on to write such A-list films as Black Swan, Hitchcock, uh, Parker. He's been nominated for both WGA and BAFTA Screenplay Awards, and word is, for a time, he was commanding million-dollar fees per script. So with that misconception shattered, let's look at some surprising other impacts Death Collector and its filmmakers had, as well as looking at some of the trends in 1980s cinema that it belongs to. 